And now, NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman with your host, Susie Ross. Hello, and thanks for joining us for this special edition of Cattleman to Cattleman. I'm Susie Ross. This week, we're bringing you a look back at some of the favorite stories we've aired here on Cattleman to Cattleman. Let's take a look. If you ever head to Lake Wales, Florida, you'll find an amazing family-run operation. The Lightsea family was the winner of the 2005 Environmental Stewardship Award for their outstanding contributions. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Lightsea Cattle Company, where Lane and Charlotte, Carrie and Marcia Lightsey, and their families work to keep Florida ranching through stewardship alive for future generations. Located in South Central Florida, Lightsey Cattle Company is a sweeping operation that includes three separate ranches in three separate counties. Since 1858, the Lightsey family has reigned as guardian over the vast open lands of Central Florida. But times are changing. The population in Florida is literally exploding. Development is everywhere, and Florida is losing 500 acres a day to development. You know, we have a, a vision that a hundred years from now, all of our land still cow land, and the Lightsey family still here operating it. The diversity of enterprises like citrus, guided hunting, timber, ecological tours, and of course their cow-calf operation all rely on good management and respect for the environment in order to thrive and profit. My, my dad kept this land, and his dad kept the land, and all the other generations kept the land where we could do what we're doing. I respect the generations I don't even know right now to leave this for them. And really that's, that's my philosophy from my heart. Over at their XL Ranch in Highlands County, a 580-acre reservoir that was dammed up in the 1960s by a previous owner is being restored as part of a program to improve wetlands and wildlife habitat in this water basin. The Nature Conservancy contacted us and they wanted to start a new program called the Flow Project. This project restores water levels back to season norms and the native vegetation is returning. This, this is Boot Hill Creek. It discharges into Fish Eating Creek which in turn discharges in Lake Okeechobee, which is, that's all part of the Everglades um, uh, system. The, the goal here is to uh, improve water quality. As a way of slowing development and ensuring that the land stays open for future generations, the Lightseas have committed large sections of their land to conservation easements. The, the conservation easements that we have is a win-win for us. It's given us a chance to preserve our land here in Florida. We get anywhere from 40 to 80 percent of the appraised value on the property. And, and you know, our property in Florida is getting high. You know, we do have a, a fair amount of money coming in. The, uh, the restriction on these easements is up to the rancher. We have our setup where we continue doing what we did before. We just can't put homes on our land. We know down deep inside that this land's going to stay just like it is from now on. It's a hot real estate market, but the Lightsies are invested not only in the conservation and resources, but the history of the state um, at a time when a lot of other ranchers aren't. Leaving much of their land unimproved has allowed the Lightsies to generate substantial income from hunting, camping, and ecological tours. These environmentally friendly businesses have also allowed wildlife to thrive naturally. Brahma Island has 14 eagles' nests. Eagle eggs have been harvested, hatched, and sent to states that lost their population. 25 gopher tortoises have been relocated to their ranch to help save this endangered species. We had a rule in our family that we never clear more than 60% of our land. And I think that's why we have so many endangered species and so many eagles. We've left that inhabitants for them and they've lost it somewhere else and they've come to our land. The Lightsies have found a way to combine the interests of the environment with their own need to sustain profitability. In an operation that covers over 30,000 acres in three counties, this is no easy chore. You wish your dad could see you the other day. <laughs> yeah. You just said that. <laughs> yeah, uh, my father died 32 years ago. Uh, I was a young man of 23 at the time. And uh, uh, I wished he could come back and just ride with me for one day and look at what we have done. Uh, he would enjoy seeing the, the cattle we have, you know, the, the pastures we've improved. But at the same time, how we've left uh, part of Florida like it was, like it was meant to be. You know, for every time we clear an acre, we try to leave two or three in its native state. Um, 
I'm proud of that. I was just about to land on a fresh pile of manure when I was strangely attracted to this stuff on the wall. Quick bait spot spray. That's good eating. Ooh, quick bait fly bait. I know it's gonna kill me, but I still love it. Quick bait fly bait and spot spray make a lethal combination to lure flies into certain death. In 1874, an innovation changed the beef industry forever. It was called barbed wire, and it brought an end to open range grazing and began a whole new era of cattle management. Today, there's another breakthrough innovation changing the beef industry. It's called Draxon, and it's one more way Pfizer Animal Health is working with veterinarians and cattlemen to open up a whole new era in animal health. To learn more about Draxon, talk to your veterinarian. Purina's wind and rain minerals are research tested and field proven to provide balanced mineral nutrition essential for cattle health, growth, and reproduction. They're highly palatable so cattle consume what they need when they need it. And wind and rain mineral special formulation resists the elements so they won't blow out of the feeder and maintain their palatability even if they've been wet. Wind and rain cattle minerals from Purina Mills, building better cattle. Want to learn more about the industry issues that matter most to you? Join National Cattlemen's Beef Association and receive the National Cattlemen Magazine and the Beef Business Bulletin. These members-only publications dig deeper into the stories that affect you and your operation's bottom line. Sign up today and receive a special gift. Call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit beefusa.org. The Environmental Stewardship Award Program recognizes cattlemen from around the country who do an outstanding job caring for and improving natural resources. This week we're visiting two past National ESAP Award winners. Let's head out to the work ranch in California. In the late 1890s, George Work's grandparents first homesteaded a portion of land near San Miguel, California. Now, nearly 115 years later, George and Elaine are the third generation of family members to operate the ranch, with the fourth and fifth generations poised to one day take the reins themselves. The Work Ranch is a 12,000-acre cow-calf stalker operation that has diversified by offering guided hunts, a farm stay program, public trail rides, and a girls' horse camp. Managing that much land is quite a task, but George Work has a way of doing things differently. George has always been kind of someone on the forefront. Oftentimes this kind of puts you in an odd spot with your neighbors or your friends. They think you're like four short of a six pack. However, a look at just one of George's innovations shows that he's ahead of his time. The trough here is a dual purpose livestock wildlife watering trough and it's an innovative idea of George's, uh, a way to allow livestock to water as well as many if not all species of wildlife. This is really accessible to all species that we have here and on the other end instead of this steep escape ramp we have a three to one slope which will allow the birds to actually bathe on it. Elaine and George's son Ben has proved himself to be an innovator as well. To control brush, Ben suggested they use their cattle. With the use of alfalfa hay as feed, a large number of cattle pushed their way through and crushed a field in minutes, containing brush that was sometimes six feet high. George is a, is a very good environmental steward here in the county. He has a lot of good uh, novel ideas that uh, we can learn from. The NRCS has been uh, very helpful in uh, some of their technical advice and the, the big thing is probably for me has, has been the, the cost share and the, and the support. Protecting the ranch's native wildlife is also a priority. Quail guzzlers, which are used by quail and other wildlife to drink, are just one example of ways that the work ranch looks out for nature. 
we want to make sure that there's a benefit to the wildlife in whatever we do. One, because we like to see them, and two, it's an income, an income source for us. And I think the realization comes that uh, you can't have a, a, a sound economic decision unless it's also socially sound and environmentally sound. That's something I've always admired about George. He, he, his, actually his passion is to make things better on the land than, than it was when he got it even. Um, it's a formidable task. It's um, a good task. We have known George Work to be uh, someone who not only is a great spokesman for his industry, um, and not only within his industry, but to the larger public. A large reason that that great habitat is out there is because of the families like the Works who have been for generations caring for the land and protecting it. The reason the Works love to take care of their land is simple. They've chosen to. You can say you love the land, but remember, love is not a feeling, it's a decision. Whether it's with the, the relationship with the land or the relationship with your spouse, it's a decision and it requires work. And you have to know what that person or what that land needs. Environmental Stewardship Award winners come from across the country. Next, we'll head to Nebraska for a look at a ranch that's more than a century old. To some, it's just a pasture, but to you, it's part of a livelihood to be passed along. That's why Ford Dodge Animal Health developed Cydectin with pasture health in mind. Cydectin protects against performance-robbing internal and external parasites, and it's the only indecticide proven to have no adverse effects on beneficial dung beetle populations. Cydectin from Ford Dodge Animal Health, protecting your herd and your pasture, so they can both be passed along. Like what you see on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen? Want to learn more? Become an NCBA member today and receive the National Cattlemen Magazine and the Beef Business Bulletin for the latest industry news and innovations. Call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit beefusa.org. From fresh tomatoes to potatoes and chicken to beef, we're as picky about our quality ingredients as you are. Because that's what we're made of. And now, this week's Management Minute. Before breeding season begins, a few management procedures involving the bulls can increase the likelihood of more cows getting pregnant. In pastures with more than one bull, make certain that the bulls will be together and have been in a common trap prior to the breeding season. Bulls will establish a social hierarchy, and it's better to get this done before the breeding season begins rather than waiting until they are first placed with the cows. Also, put young bulls with young bulls and mature bulls with mature bulls. Mixing the ages will result in the mature bull dominating the younger bull completely and in some instances causing serious injury. If the plan is to rotate bulls during the breeding season, then use the mature bulls first and follow with the yearling bulls in the last third of the breeding season. This way, the young bulls will have fewer cows to settle and will be one to two months older when they first start breeding. Finally, a conservative rule of thumb for young bulls is to place them with roughly the same number of cows as is their age in months. For example, an 18-month-old bull is best suited with roughly 18 cows. Welcome back to Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Another Environmental Stewardship Award winner is the Kelly Ranch, which sits in the Nebraska Sand Hills. There, the Kelly family is working to preserve not only the environment, but its decades-old legacy. Even at more than 20,000 acres, the Kelly Ranch is a family business, and it's been that way for 117 years. Located in western Nebraska, along the North Platte River, the Kelly operation is actually two ranches just about 15 miles apart. The land they occupy is a unique and environmentally sensitive run at the southern edge of the Nebraska Sandhills. 
Rolling sand dunes, steep slopes, and fragile riparian areas create constant challenges for Mike and Cynthia Kelly. The Nebraska Sandhills is very unique in that it makes up an area three times the size of Massachusetts. And of course it is made up of sand. And we are in a fairly low rainfall area of 15 to 16 inches a year. But it makes it for an excellent grassland for our cattle. But it is a very fragile ecosystem which does require uh, good management to take care of that resource. Using ecologically sound business practices is just a natural way of life for the Kellys. The frail environment demands special attention, but Mike and Cynthia have learned with a little extra care and some clever ranching techniques, the beautiful Midwestern ranch can produce impressive results. Environmental stewardship and, and ranching uh, go hand in hand, and, and today to be a successful rancher or even to be a profitable rancher, you have to be a good steward of your natural resource. The Kelly Ranch, another example of today's environmentally friendly cattle industry. For nearly two decades, the Environmental Stewardship Award program has recognized both regional and national winners. Head to beefusa.org for more information on the ESAP program. It's an opportunity to put stewardship back into your livestock production while increasing profitability and quality of life. It's all a part of the New Holland 2007 Ranch Stewardship Live Tour, and it's coming to an area near you. Join experts including Kurt Pate, Kyle Clement, and Dr. Ron Gill, along with Cattleman to Cattleman's own Todd McCartney as they tour the country with educational demonstrations that will impact your operation. The 2007 Ranch Stewardship Live Tour is stopping in six states, including Missouri, Illinois, Nebraska, Arkansas, Virginia, and Tennessee this summer. If you're interested in attending this two-day event, head to cattlemantocattlemen.org for details on dates and locations. You don't want to miss this exciting educational opportunity. Agriculture is a small portion of the population now, and if we're not working together, we're not going to get anywhere. As our family, we cannot be in Washington, D.C. all the time, and I am i just couldn't live without uh, NCBA representing. They're looking out for our interests. They're there fighting for us every day. If you got one cow or two cows or 100 cows, you need to be a member. I'm a member of the NCBA because a long time ago, 35 years ago, I felt that I needed to know more of what my industry is doing. So I got started at the county level. If you're in the cattle industry, now's the time to join and let your voice be heard loud and clear. You need NCBA working for you, and NCBA needs you. It's easy to join. Just call, get online, or talk with your state affiliate and sign up today. Each year, the Environmental Stewardship Awards program recognizes farmers and ranchers across the country who have made long-standing contributions to our natural resources and habitat. This year's national winner was just announced and hails from LaGrange, Wyoming, where they're taking important steps to protect the environment for future generations of ranchers. The wide open spaces that make up Thaler Land and Livestock Company in southeast Wyoming are usually populated only by Dennis and Sandy Thaler, their daughter Brandy, and son-in-law Kevin. But on this day, the Thaler Place is downright crowded. An Ag in the Classroom program has brought in more than 50 teachers from all over the state. They were wanting to um, have a place to come out and, and show some teachers some new and uh, different uh, things that ranchers are doing. And we were really tickled to be able to have them out to uh, show our place to them. We looked at some weed projects and some of the innovative things that he does there so that we can let teachers know what ranchers are doing to better the land that they have and how they can give back and be good stewards of their land. Telling the story of cattle ranching and stewardship is nothing new for the Thalers. Dennis is the third generation on this 20,000 acre operation that supports more than 1,500 cows and a small feedlot. Well, I think our main goal on this ranch is to improve all of our land, get every acre as good as we possibly can do it. My dad and I think a lot alike. We have the same goals for this ranch. Dad's taught me a lot about teamwork and working together with um, other organizations to keep improving and keep expanding on what's already been here. Well, I feel that we've all worked very hard and Dennis has worked especially hard to preserve the land and he's always working with 
different entities such as the NRCS, the Department of Ag, Weed and Pest Department to better things around here. I don't think there's any project that he wouldn't take on to help improve the land and improve the cow herd and the, the ranch itself. Maybe the biggest challenge Dennis has faced is fighting the spread of leafy spurge. One 200 acre parcel of land he bought in 1988 was overrun with the noxious weed. When we got it, it was all leafy spurge. This is a pretty unique situation here. Uh, it was thought out really well by Dennis and how to do it. Uh, it's taken a little bit of time to get to the point that we've gotten, but it's turned out to be one of the best projects uh, that we've seen. We devised a plan to go in and level this piece of ground so that we could manage our water properly. We went in and we corrugated it, and then we started irrigating it. And what our goal was the first year was to just go in and give that spurge everything that it would possibly want. We wanted to really stimulate it. And then in the fall, we came in and we just hammered it with Tordon. And that really knocked it that, that first year. And then we continually worked with it for two years without irrigation. And, and now this field is one of our best uh, horse hay producing fields we have on the ranch. Another project that took huge effort and the guidance of NRCS was reclaiming a 40-acre sand dune that was on land the Thaler's lease from the state of Wyoming. I think that's something that every rancher tries to do is, is improve some of those areas that are, are really bad and, and especially on state trust lands. We're, we're there to, to take care of that land. We take care of that land just like it's ours and, and we have pride in what goes on there. And Dennis really has done a good job at taking all those things to the extreme. He, he works real hard to, to put the best system on the ground to benefit his business and improve the resources in the, at the same time. With rainfall under 13 inches per year, the Thalers have made extensive use of irrigation. Their center pivot irrigated pasture allows them to intensively graze their herd, holding them off native pasture for a good part of the growing season. We're able to go on those earlier than May 15th and the, it saved our native range, so we don't have to go on to our native range until at least the middle of July. And, that, and that's a real key to building up our native range with using those practices. Besides carefully managing their grasslands, the Thalers have planted hundreds of trees, including one group that will serve as a living snow fence. And they've taken action to improve wildlife habitat, protect water quality, and keep the ranch sustainable on into the future. You need to be a good steward to keep your grasses for your cattle and just to help the ranch going, but it's also bigger than that. I think it's important for the whole state and the whole country to keep your natural resources going and just keep the environment as healthy as you possibly can. We've been here for going on 100 years, so it's a great honor for us to be able to carry on our uh, family tradition. This is Jim Witt for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You can learn more about the Environmental Stewardship Awards program at our website, cattlemantocattlemen.org. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, a television show by cattlemen for cattlemen. You find them in magazines, at the grocery store, and online, those tantalizing new beef recipes. But where do they come from? Chances are that recipe you can't wait to try was tested in a unique kitchen in downtown Chicago. You might see a flat iron steak on the grill, a roast being sliced, or a group of chefs tasting a recipe, but this is far from an ordinary kitchen. NCBA's Beef and Veal Culinary Center in Chicago is where a team of skilled chefs, nutritionists, and food experts work to help create consumers craving for beef. At the Chekhov-funded Beef and Veal Culinary Center, we're all about developing great, delicious, and nutritious beef recipes that will increase demand and ultimately have an impact uh, on our producers. To help build beef demand, the team at the Beef and Veal Culinary Center develops more than 100 new recipes each year. In addition, all the recipes in the checkoff funded Healthy Beef Cookbook were tested here, and the center tests new products and develops cooking methods for new beef cuts. The beef value cuts that we're hearing so much about, the flat iron, the ranch steak, petite tender, the Culinary Center developed all of the uh, cook timings for those cuts. 
uh, which was extremely helpful for us to go out and promote them. The goal is the consumer servicing their needs, servicing their de desires, while informing them of what a great product we have. Then we're presenting them how to cook our product. It's exciting. I mean, the whole thing is expanding our markets. The Beef Checkoff Funded Culinary Center recently developed eight new Hispanic-themed recipes and is also working on more kid-friendly beef dishes to help build beef demand among young consumers. You can get more details on the Healthy Beef Cookbook at beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Thanks for watching this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. A new episode airs every Tuesday night at 8.30 right here on RFD-TV.